Oh my, we have been hearing a lot about fake news. It doesn't seem to stop. Everybody is accusing everyone of lying, especially around politics. The term itself has become widely used to discredit any opposing viewpoint. Fake news. The story itself is fabricated. There is no verifiable facts. There are no verifiable facts or sources or quotes. It is thrown about to demean and diminish, discredit the other view. Think about how we participate in fake news. Think about how your life is impacted by fake news. And you know, I'm not talking about the fake news that we see on the internet or read in papers or see on TV. I'm speaking about those stories that we tell ourselves over and over and over again about how the world is, who we are, in it. I'm talking about how we too use this fake news to discredit, diminish our truer essence of who we are. I don't, we're not deliberately trying to, to damage our sense of who we are, though sometimes, sometimes that happens. Many of us in the recognition that we are so much more than any of these small reified selves and the stories that go along with them, that they are only a fraction of who we are, should be good news, real news, fake news. I'm not worthy. I have to be the best. I can't, I don't have a right. Actually, you know what? If you spontaneously are pulled to it, would you just write a one-liner in the chat of fake news? Would you do that so we can kind of hear, see some of the, the fake news that is that we all know? I'm gonna just, just give us a moment to do that. I'm gonna see what goes here. Open up the chat here. Oh. I can't see it. Chat, 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 chat. Yeah, I'm no good. I'm a little dumb. I'm not good enough. I'm so stupid. I'm alone. Yeah. I'm a fraud. I'm not happy. I'm inadequate. I did something wrong. Yeah, we get it. We get this. I'm isolated. Yes. I have to be better. I have to defend myself. Life has passed me by. So just taking a moment to recognize that we know these stories. Mindfulness star, every time we recognize the story, And just as a reflection, how does it feel to see the stories here? What arises as we look at these stories and share these stories? What feelings, sensations, thoughts as we share these stories arise? Pleasant, unpleasant, 
seemingly neutral. Catherine spoke so beautifully about Vedana. We can sense the suffering underneath the stories. Can you send a loving message to others here that they have some ease from the stories that grip them? May they find some release from these stories. And while you're at it, send yourself the same wish. Camille Hikes is a wonderful teacher and she uh, sort of inspired me in this talk. She said, we can learn to rest through the fake news for longer periods of time and see it for what it is. Imagine if all the fake news were dispelled. How would that feel? All worry, gone. All struggle, grasping, shielding, hiding, fear, gone. Now, that would be joyful. And we know that this is a lifelong practice, a practice of letting go, allowing, recognizing the joy in every small step, in every small noticing, in every small pearl we pick up along the way, in every small release. As we practice, we grow in our devotion to want to let go of the tight, contracted stories. They have covered and obscured our capacity to see clearly the goodness of who we are as we are. As we practice, our in-touchness becomes more refined and sensitive and nuanced. There's a, an awareness that teaches into all of the layers of conditioning. And boy, oh boy, there are layers upon layers of clay and dirt and conditioning that cover the golden Buddha. Or another way to say this, that cover the part of us that is already awake, loving, uncontrived, and warm. Rumi says, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek out, find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. So we, we do, we know, we build barriers to protect ourselves. And sometimes we really need to do that. But the consequences of this chronic protection is that as someone said, we feel alone, trapped, isolated, fake news, and we actually can become invested in, in this, right? We could even convince ourselves about this, argue about it. So good news. Mindfulness invites us beyond such notions and stories. 
Mindfulness helps us to recognize that our essential nature is awake and radiant with compassion. Our essential nature needs to be nurtured, needs to be allowed. And as we become more intimate with awareness, we begin to trust in our essential nature. Our confidence grows. Mindfulness teaches us to respect and value whatever is here. All conditions, all individuals, all experiences are our teachers and our opportunities. There is a joy in being in more direct contact with what we are experiencing in our hearts, our bodies, our minds, fuller contactness, even the painful, even the difficult. I think that no matter what we are practicing or in whatever traditions or whatever, what is most important is that our heart keeps awakening. We wanna live from an open heart. I'm gonna close my talk with the last paragraph in a book written by Minyu Rimshe, and he is a Tibetan teacher who exudes joy. This book is called the joy of living. But the best part of all of this, no matter how long you meditate or what techniques you use, every technique of Buddhist meditation ultimately generates compassion whether we are aware of it or not. Whenever you look at your mind, you can't help but recognize your similarity to those around you. When you see your own desire to be happy, you can't avoid seeing the same desire in others. And when you look clearly at your own fear, anger, or aversion, you can't help but see that everybody around you feels the same fear, anger, and aversion. When you look at your own mind, all the imaginary differences between yourself and others automatically dissolve. And the ancient prayer of the four immeasurables becomes as natural and persistent as your own beating heart. May all sentient beings have happiness and know the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings have joy and the causes of joy and may all sentient beings remain in great equanimity, free from attraction and aversion. Thank you everybody for listening.